we begin lecture 2 of natural language processing. In lecture 1, we gave an introduction to the course and also define the subject. We proceed with stages of natural language processing, which will form the content of lecture 2. Let us continue on the slide. As I had mentioned before, uh, the faculty instructor is myself and uh, my area of research is natural language processing, machine learning and course home page will be soon created. Proceeding further, I would like to remind you once again the areas of artificial intelligence and their interdependence. We find here that natural language processing comes on the left bottom corner, which is dependent on machine learning, knowledge representation, logic and search. There are many other areas of artificial intelligence and they have this interdependence. This was explained last time and we also said that AI is the forcing function for computer science and natural language processing happens to be the forcing function for AI itself. We once again mention the course content, we will cover sound that means, uh, speech processing, word and word forms, morphological processing, structures which means syntactic processing, parsing, meaning representation means semantics and web 2.0 applications. This is a, a plan for the whole course and these are the topics to be covered. Natural language processing was defined as a branch of artificial intelligence with two goals. The science goal is to understand the way language operates and engineering goal is to build systems that analyze and generate language and reduce the man machine gap. We also mentioned that ambiguity is the crux of the problem in natural language processing and uh, resolving ambiguity is the main concern of language processing. We then introduce the stages of language processing, namely phonetics and phonology, which is concerned with sound, morphology concerned with words, lexical analysis, how to make dictionaries and how to store words in them, syntactic analysis, parsing of sentences, semantic analysis is concerned with meaning representation, pragmatics means how a sentence is used and discourse is the processing of connected sentences. We proceeded further and understood that there are something called homophones, which are words which sound similar, near homophones, which are words which are nearly identical in their pronunciation. In speech processing, word boundary detection is a very important problem. The example which was given was ajayenge can be broken up into a jayenge will come or a jayenge will come tomorrow or the sentence I got a plate which can be broken up in two different ways either to mean I got a plate which means I woke a plate or I got a plate I have a plate with me. Similarly, phrase boundary detection is a problem and this fluency is concerned with how a speaker intersparses his sentences with meaningless sounds just to be able to organize his thought. The last topic we discussed in the last lecture was morphology or the word formation rules, how plurals uh, influence the noun forms, how verb forms are influenced by tense, aspect, modality and so on. We also mentioned that by using finite state machines, one can uh, produce morphology analyzers and this is a very important problem in computer science. Languages differ in their richness of morphology. For example, Dravidian, Hungarian, Turkish are very rich in morphology, Chinese and English are poor in morphology. So, this is where we stopped in the last class. Now, we proceed with the further discussions, namely the stages of natural language processing. Okay. So, now comes lexical analysis, which is the, the dictionary making. If you look at the example given in the slide, it refers to dictionary access and obtaining the properties of the word. For example, the word dog, this is a noun which corresponds to the lexical property. 
it takes S in plural which is the morphological property, it is animate which is a semantic property, it is a four legged animal which is again a semantic property, it is carnivore that means eats meat again a semantic property. So, one might wonder why we need to store all this information onto the dictionary. So, when we uh, produce the dictionary entries in a lexicon, one of our main concern is how to embed richness in this whole data structure. Dictionary indeed forms a heart of natural language processing, just like morphological processing is concerned with breaking up a word and obtaining its suffixes, obtaining the features which are contained in the word. Dictionary on the other hand is concerned with how to store the root words. After morphological processing, one obtains the root words and how these words are stored in the dictionary. What kind of information do we have to embed in the dictionary? For example, uh, the example which was given was of dog in the dictionary. Dog takes s in plural. So, many dogs are barking. Here dog has become dogs. After morphological analysis, s is stripped off and the root word is dog. At that point of time, when the processing has to go further, it needs to know what are the properties of the word dog. So, at that point of time, the dictionary comes handy and it tells us that dog is a noun. It takes s in the plural. Its semantic properties are that it is an animal, it is animate, it has four legs and so on. So, who uses this kind of information? There is a field of research called question answering, which is a very upcoming field in today's world of internet. And in question answering, a machine is made to answer users questions. So, this is a field of information extraction, information retrieval. It is a branch of those fields and it uh, gets its support from information retrieval. When the documents are obtained from the internet, the documents are processed to manufacture an answer, so to say. Okay. So, if we ask a question, how many years does a dog live? Okay. This question presupposes that dog is an animate entity, it has a stage of being born, then there is a period of being alive, which finally terminates in the dog being dead. Okay. So, how many years does a dog live? That this presupposes all these intricate and small, but crucial pieces of knowledge, many times requiring inferencing. So, this kind of processing is assisted by a rich dictionary without a rich lexical knowledge base this kind of processing is not possible. So, here is the importance of lexical analysis. If you look at the bottom of the slide, the main challenge in lexical analysis is lexical or word sense disambiguation, which indeed is one of the most challenging problems of natural language processing. We would like to dwell on word sense disambiguation through a set of examples. So, this transparency lexical disambiguation shows the steps involved in the disambiguating process. The first step is part of speech disambiguation. Look at the uh, example here, dog as a noun is an animal and dog as a verb means to pursue, to run after, to go after. So, one could for example, say a sentence wherever Ram went, misfortune dogged him. That means, wherever Ram went, misfortune went after him. Okay. So, this is the uh, part of speech of dog as a verb and the first part of speech in the first line, dog is a noun. Here, dog is an animal. The words and disambiguation problem comes in after part of speech disambiguation is over. So, for example, when we have decided that dog is a noun, the next question we ask is, is dog an animal or is the particular sense of dog a very detestable person? One of the 
senses of dog is this a very detestable person. So, from the context one will have to make out whether dog is being used as an animal or dog is being used as a detestable person. So, we must mention here that when a word is used many uh, meanings of the word come into play depending on the context. Typically in a document what operates is called one sense per discourse assumption. Typically a word is used in only a single sense. Let me write down this particular hypothesis. We are uh, discussing the uh, branch of natural language processing as a, as a as a branch of artificial intelligence and we are also discussing word sense disambiguation ambiguation in this context and we are saying that a word typically follows one sense per discourse. Okay. So, this is the statement one sense per discourse. Okay. So, this is a very important assumption it says that when a word appears in a document it does not have multiple senses it has typically one sense. Okay. So, let us proceed let us proceed with the discussion look at the transparency once again dog has these two senses as animal and as a very de detestable person. So, now when we see dog in the text what do we make out from the context do you mean animal or do you mean a detestable person. Now, it so happens that dog the predominant sense of dog is animal. Okay. The sense of detestable person is very rare and this is a typical phenomenon in most of the languages for most of the words. Each word has a very predominant meaning other meanings are more uh, are other meanings are less frequent compared to this particular meaning. So, dog, animal sense of dog is more frequent detestable person sense of dog is less frequent. Now, to disambiguate a word we need word relationship in a context. For example, look at this sentence the chair emphasized the need for adult education the chair emphasized the need for adult education. The word which is being disambiguated here is chair. Now, chair can be either a piece of furniture or the person holding the chair. Right. So, when we look at this sentence what is the meaning of chair? From the context it is clear that we mean a person here the chair emphasized the need for adult education. Presumably, a furniture cannot talk emphasizing is a kind of talking and therefore, emphasize is the clue to disambiguation. So, let us remember this very important point in word sense disambiguation namely when we find out the sense of a word from its context the context provides clues critical clues with respect to the sense and when we design a computer algorithm for word sense disambiguation we have to see how to obtain that clue from the sentence. So, for example, in this sentence the chair emphasized the need for adult education the clue word is emphasize. Now, when we create an automatic system for disambiguation it has to identify that emphasis is an activity which can be done by an animate being and therefore, chair is not a furniture. Okay. This is the way the algorithm will proceed. There are lots of intricacies involved in words and disambiguation in the course we will cover words and disambiguation algorithms in lot of detail quite a few lectures will be devoted to words and disambiguation. So, uh, at this point we just uh, mark this this particular fact that from the context a clue will come in and disambiguate the word. Now, this is an this particular sentence which I uh, showed as an illustration is constructed by me but words and disambiguation is not really an artificial problem. It appears in our day to day life all the time 
it is very common in day to day communication. Look at this particular uh, advertisement in satellite channel, one of the satellite channels which I had seen on TV. Look at this sentence, watch what you want, when you want. This particular sentence if you think carefully has two meanings, watch what you want, when you want. The word watch has two meanings, one meaning is look intently, look carefully and the other meaning of watch is be careful. Now, one meaning of this sentence will be be careful what you want, when you want. Okay? So, just be watchful, what is it you desire and what is the time when you desire it. There is always a right time for desiring anything and also that thing should be appropriate. This is the meaning of that sentence, one meaning, first meaning. The second meaning of watch is look carefully. So, watch what you want, when you want. Here watch means the act of watching something, act of looking at something. So, watch you what you want, when you want. So, this is a satellite channel ad, okay, ad advertisement for a satellite channel. So, this advertisement is uh, is sort of giving a propaganda for the satellite channel. It is saying watch what you want, when you want, you have this kind of freedom on this satellite channel. Okay? So, it is clear that there are two meanings of this sentence coming from two different senses of this word. Not only words, but phrases also have multiple meanings. For example, the phrase here ground breaking ceremony versus ground bre breaking research. Ground breaking ceremony means the the starting ritual, some kind of worship, some kind of puja done for starting an activity or starting an organization or even you know starting a building, starting the activity of constructing a building that is ground breaking ceremony. And ground breaking research is something which is a pioneering kind of work, it starts a line of research. So, here the phrase ground breaking has two meanings. Okay? So, maybe uh, through this particular slide, we have made this very important point that words have multiple meanings. Whenever we have to process sentences, we have to first solve this difficulty that words have multiple meanings and in this particular context, which meaning of the word is being talked about. Okay? So, that is the meaning with which we have to proceed further for the next stage of processing of the sentence. Let us proceed to the next slide. <clears throat> it is also a very common observation that technological developments bring in new terms, additional meanings and nuances for existing terms. For example, let us look at the first line, the word justify. The word justify has its own original meaning, justifying something that means validate, validating something. Whereas, in this particular sentence justify the right margin, this means aligning the words of sentences with the right margin. This meaning of justify is align and this meaning came because of word processing. When word processing came, okay, so software assisted word processing at the time the word justify also came into our parlance and this means aligning the sentences with the right margin. So, justify came because of word processing. The word Xerox is a new verb which came because the Xerox machines were brought into play, copier machines. So, the word Xeroxed became a new verb. Digital trace, this is a very new expression and a very interesting expression. Digital trace actually describes the trace of an individual as he or she navigates the web or the internet. All the URLs that we visit, all the pages that we browse, they form what is called our digital trace. So, in that sense you can imagine that Google as a search engine is an extremely powerful entity influencing our lives. Every click of ours, every URL that we have visited, every page that we have browsed everything has a record with Google. Okay? So, Google has a complete digital trace of our activities on the internet. So, this particular expression digital trace, it came because of search engine and also because of the internet. 
a clear indication that technology brings in new phrases and new words into our day to day life. The next word is also an interesting word. This is an expression which came as the combination of two words communication and faking, communicating and faking. The word is communi faking. This means pretending to talk on a mobile when you are actually not talking. Okay. So, that is a very, very interesting situation. Somebody has taken up the mobile and is talking into the mobile, but actually this person is not talking with anybody. So, he is faking communication that is why it is called communi faking. What would be the use of this? The use of community faking uh, could be for example, humorously speaking uh, a giving a way of disappearing for, for, from a boring meeting. Suppose, you are sitting in a meeting and you do not like the way things are proceeding, it is a very, very boring discussion and you would like to excuse yourself from the meeting. Then you can communicate into your mobile while actually you are not communicating, you are faking the communication and this is called a situation of community faking. Okay. So, community faking could be useful in disappearing from a boring meeting. The next word is also a very, very new expression. It is called discomgugulation. Discomgugulation. This is the anxiety or discomfort at not being able to access internet. This is a very, very modern phenomenon, a very recent phenomenon in our life. More, many of our young people are glued to the computer, surfing the web, searching for information, looking at different web pages, looking at pictures, browsing pages and so on. So, all these is the googling activity. Okay. You are very being very active on the internet, searching for information and browsing. If this individual is not able to use the search engine, not able to access the internet, then he or she suffers from an anxiety syndrome. This particular syndrome is called discombobulation. This is discomfort at not being able to do googling, not being able to do google. So, this is discombobulation, it is a new word. The next phrase, which is the phrase helicopter parenting, this is a phrase and it means over parenting. Just like a helicopter goes over a terrain, okay, it keeps on moving over a terrain, seeing what is below it. Similarly, there are some overbearing parents who are extra careful of what their children are doing and in their extra care, they are doing what is called helicopter parenting. So, th all these words you can see came from technological advancements, justify because of word processing, Xerox be because of Xerox machine, digital trace because of internet, community faking because of mobile technology, discombobulation because of Google helicopter parenting it has a, a metaphorical association with helicopter. Let me give you one more word, which is also very interesting. I came to know about this yesterday from the newspaper. This word is called texto. Okay, texto. Texto and there is an allied word speco. Okay. So, they came from the word typo. What does the word typo mean? Typo means a typing mistake, right? Typo means typing mistake. So, texto is a texting mistake. That means, you are trying to send an SMS, okay? it's trying to send an SMS over the mobile and if you make a mistake, then this is known as texto. And from that came the expression speako, you are trying to speak something and make a mistake while speaking, this is called a speco. Okay. So, the word typo inspired two more words, texto, this came in the context of mobile technology, speco came in the context of speaking. Okay. So, again we can see that new technology, namely the technology of mobile had to be, uh, when it came, it introduced this new term called texto. Okay. So, let us proceed and uh, this particular transparency showed that we create new words in our language or an existing word gets a new meaning just like just justify. New word come because of technology and we have to deal with the meanings of these words. 
Next, we come to a very important stage where we have graduated from the processing of words. Okay. So, we have processed the words, now we come to the structure of the sentence, the phrases. So, here S is the sentence and this is a tree structure which computer scientists are very familiar with. The sentence has two phrases, noun phrase and verb phrase. Under the noun phrase, you have a noun. In this particular case, it is the word I, which is a pronoun. Under the verb phrase, you have a verb and noun phrase. The, the particular verb in this case is like and the noun phrase goes to a noun, namely mangoes. This whole sentence is I like mangoes in Hindi, mujhe aam pasand hai. So, I like mangoes. This has this structure. It has a noun phrase and the verb phrase. The verb phrase again is broken up into two entities, verb and noun phrase. Okay. So, this is known as the structure detection and the whole problem of converting a sentence into a tree like structure like this is called the problem of parsing or syntactic analysis. And we will look at many algorithms for parsing as the course progresses. We again mention here the problems which a natural language processing system encounters while parsing. Look at the next transparency. The challenges which come in syntactic processing are known as structural ambiguities. The first challenge which I show here is the scope challenge. It is called the scope ambiguity. If you see this sentence, the old men and women were taken to safe locations. The old men and women were taken to safe locations. The question in this sentence is who is old? Are both men and women old or only the men that are old? Okay? Because the, uh, th there is this adjective here old, how much of text does the adjective qualify? That is the question. Both men and women are old or only men are old? This is known as the scope ambiguity. That means, what is the region of influence or scope of the adjective here in the sentence, the, the word old. How much text does it qualify? Look at the next sentence here. This ambiguity is an extremely interesting ambiguity because it completely reverses the meaning of the sentence. Here what we have is an adjective like entity, no. Okay? No smoking areas will allow hookahs inside. So, when you look at this sentence, uh, what meaning does it convey to you? The word no is a quantifier, not any. The meaning of no is not any. Now, what is the scope of no? Because it, is, it acts like an adjective, quantifiers act like an adjective. Let me write down the term for no okay? and this term is called quantifier. Just look at the word here, no. The meaning of no is not any. Okay. So, this is a quantifier. I write here the term for such entities, linguistic units, quantifier. Okay. There are other quantifiers also. No is not the only quantifier. All is a very important quantifier, all. Okay. All men are mortal. All men are mortal. So, this is a quantification over men, all men, this is all. Another quantifier is sum. Okay. So, sum men are rich. Okay. This is also a quantifier. So, no all sum, these things are known as quantifiers. Let me also mention that all and sum have a special place in logic and artificial intelligence. Okay. And let me write it down for you. All is called a universal quantifier. Universal quantifier. Okay. And in logic, when you go to predicate cal calculus, predicate calculus, the quantifier all is expressed by a special symbol. This is the symbol. Okay. This is known as the for all quantification symbol. This is a 
v upside down okay, with a bar passing through the center of the v. So, it is almost like an upside down a except that both its ends are extended in both directions. So, this is called a universal quantifier standing for for all and sum as a quantifier is called existential quantifier. Existential quantifier okay. and the symbol for that is a, a, a reverse E. Okay. E is written this way, E is written this way. Instead of that, you turn it the other way, a mirror image, and this becomes the existential quantifier. There exists. So, quantifiers are very important linguistic particles in natural language processing, and they their processing is also a very important job, should be carefully done, otherwise, we can have ambiguity. So, let us look at the sentence which we are discussing just some time back before the discussion on universal and existential quantifier. This sentence no smoking areas will hook us inside. The question was what is the scope of qualification of no? We say that depending on the scope of no, this sentence has one or the other meaning. One meaning of this sentence is that you cannot find any smoking area which will allow hookahs inside. So, this is the sense of not any, not there does there does not exist a smoking area which will allow hookahs inside. So, here no smoking areas, the scope of no is smoking areas, okay. it is qualifying smoking areas. No, I am sorry, it is qualifying the whole sentence, smoking areas will allow hookahs inside. This whole sentence is being negated by the presence of no, the scope of no is the complete sentence therefore, no smoking areas will allow hookahs inside. The other uh, meaning of the sentence is there are certain areas special areas called smoking areas okay the the special areas called no smoking areas and these no smoking areas are such that they allow hookahs inside they may not allow other things they may not allow cigarettes and cigars but they will allow hookahs inside okay so you can possibly see that depending on what is the scope of no whether it is the complete sentence after these or just this compound word smoking area, depending on that the meaning takes a complete reversal. Okay. The one meaning of this sentence is that there are certain designated areas called smoking areas, none of them allow hookahs and there are also uh, some areas called no smoking areas, they however, allow hookahs. Okay. So, this is the meaning. Now, these two examples will be sufficient to tell us that adjectives and quantifiers unless their scope is completely precisely determined, they can lead to ambiguity confusion of meaning. Next kind of syntactic ambiguity which we move on to now is called the preposition phrase ambiguity, preposition phrase ambiguity and this comes from the uh, multiple possibilities of attachment of the preposition phrase in the sentence we have in front of us a very classical sentence, I saw the boy with a telescope, I saw the boy with a telescope. This sentence is ambiguous because with a telescope is attached to what boy or saw. One meaning of the sentence is I saw a boy and the boy had a telescope, I, that means I saw the boy with a telescope. The other meaning is I saw the boy and I saw the boy with a telescope, using a telescope. So, you can see that if with was substituted by using, then there is no ambiguity apparently. I saw the boy using a telescope. No, even then there is an ambiguity, because again the word using uh, does not clarify who is using the telescope. I saw the boy using a telescope, the boy might be using the telescope or I might be using the telescope. So, you can see the difficulty of processing this sentence whether with remains or does not and if it is substituted by a girandial verb using, 
even then the ambiguity does not go. So, the question is who has the telescope the boy or I and this is arising because with a telescope is a qualifier for the boy or not. Next sentence I saw the mountain with a telescope in this case there is no ambiguity apparently. Okay. I saw the mountain with a telescope why should there be any ambiguity in this because with a telescope is definitely the instrument of seeing I am performing the seeing action, action with a telescope and therefore, the meaning that the mountain has telescope does not arise here okay. that possibility does not arise. So, it is unambiguous in that sense, but it is not such a simple case it is country specific domain specific there is a state in United States called Arizona. The state of Arizona is famous for its space research program and the program is an extremely thriving program in that state. So, much so that most of the mountains in Arizona are fitted with a telescope which are used for observing the planets and the stars. So, if this sentence is uttered in Arizona, it continues to be an ambiguous sentence because in Arizona you have mountains with telescopes, you have mountains which have telescopes on them. So, again the question that will arise is where is the telescope? Is the telescope with me or is it with the mountain? So, we are invoking the world knowledge here, something called the world knowledge. A mountain cannot be an instrument of telescope, instrument of seeing, which is fine the mountain is not an instrument of seeing and therefore, the mountain uh, cannot have the telescope, but we had did not take into account the possibility that a mountain may be fitted with a telescope for making observations of the celestial figures in which case this whole sentence is ambiguous fine. So, I think uh, this point is well understood that ambiguity is a subtle and complex feature it is situation dependent time dependent country dependent region dependent. Next sentence I saw the boy with the ponytail here at last we can heave a sigh of relief. This sentence is definitely not ambiguous the ponytail is with the boy I cannot see anybody with a ponytail ponytail is not an instrument of seeing. This is a crucial piece of word knowledge which is being used and that ambiguity is resolved now. However, uh, the word knowledge is uh, situation dependent, region dependent. The in the previous case, the word knowledge did not come handy when the sentence was being uttered in Arizona. Now, these kind of sentences one sees in textbooks and one wonders whether structural ambiguity is indeed a real life problem, does it indeed arise in real day to day communication. Here I say that structural ambiguity like word sense ambiguity is a very, very, very ubiquitous problem it is all pervading. I saw a newspaper headline times of in, in times of India 20 years later BMC pays father 20 lakhs for causing son's death. 20 years later Bombay municipality corporation pays father 20 lakh rupees for causing son's death. Now, in this case who is causing the son's death, who is responsible for son's death? It is something to do with Bombay municipality corporation, Maybe some vehicle which the municipality corporation was using was responsible for the son's death, but if the phrase for causing son's death is not correctly attached, it can lead to a completely different meaning and completely unacceptable meaning may be a comical meaning. So, read it this way 20 years later BMC pays father 20 lakhs for causing son's death. It, this might be construed to read BMC is paying father 20 lakh rupees as a reward because the father has caused the son's death. So, by causing the son's death the father is able to get rupees 20 lakh. So, this is a completely unacceptable meaning we know it from our real day to day experience and it is uh, very apparent here that unless the uh, attachment problem is properly solved the 
there is meaning distortion, okay, complete distortion of meaning in the sentence. Okay. So, let me just summarize what I said in this slide. We discussed scope ambiguity, which is the region of influence of the quantifiers and adjectives, how much of text they qualify and we discussed a very, very classical problem of natural language processing, preposition phrase ambiguity, preposition phrase ambiguity, okay, where we are concerned with how a preposition is attaching to a particular word in the sentence. Let us proceed further. There are other structural ambiguity examples here, all of them are actual examples which occurred when um, when I was in a conference or I was in a discussion with somebody. For example, this I heard, this particular sentence I heard in a particular conference. I did not know my PDA, PDA is a handheld device, had a phone for 3 months. I did not know my PDA had a phone for 3 months. The question is this for 3 months, which is a duration, it is a durative phrase for 3 months it refers to which event. Okay. So, one of the possibilities is that it refers to this knowing event. I did not know for 3 months that my PDA had a phone. So, this is one reading. I did not know my PDA had a phone for 3 months. Another reading is for 3 months is, is attached to the noun phone. So, it is a qualifier for phone. So, the sense of this sentence will be I did not know my PDA had a phone and this phone was there for 3 months. Okay, this is one meaning. There is another attachment point for 3 months. Maybe you can guess which is this attachment point. For 3 months can also be attached to PDA. Okay. A, a, a very interesting rule of thumb is to see that preposition phrases in a sentence can be attached potentially to any noun that comes before it. Okay. So, it can be attached to I, it can be attached to PDA, it can be attached to phone and it can also attach to the main verb of the sentence. So, all these attachments, all these three at different, four different attachments, they will give rise to four meanings. So, one meaning was I did not know for three months that my instrument had a phone, another meaning is I did not know that my PDA for 3 months, that means this PDA was with me for 3 months, maybe it was loaned to me for 3 months, had a phone and finally, I did not know my PDA had a phone for 3 months, that means the, the phone itself was for 3 months. Now, depending on the naturalness of the situation, depending on our life experience, we can exclude some meanings. For example, phone for 3 months is a strange construction in this particular sentence. So, most likely the actual reading of this sentence is I did not know for 3 months that my PDA had a phone. This was uh, overheard by me in a conference. Uh, there is an actual sentence in the newspaper which drew my attention. This is also a very uh, famous uh, sentence in the sense that similar kind of construction abounds in uh, newspaper stories, newspaper writings. The cameraman shot the man with a gun when he was near Tendulkar. I will read the sentence once again. The cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was near Tendulkar. The different meanings of the sentence arise from a complex interaction of many different factors. Okay. One of the factors is the fact that the cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was near Tendulkar. The first fact is that shot has two meanings. Okay. This is an act of shooting and the shooting can be by a camera, which a cameraman does or the shooting can be by a gun, which can be by a terrorist for example, or by a murderer. So, the cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was near Tendulkar. If somebody comes back and says that uh, no, the word cameraman makes the meaning very clear for the word shot, makes it very clear. The cameraman shot the man because of this presence, the presence of the word camera, the meaning of shoot becomes very clear. This is not the case. 
Now, there is nothing which prevents a cameraman from carrying a, an actual gun uh, okay, and doing that shooting activity. Therefore, it is plausible that the cameraman is shooting with a gun. Now, the cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was near Tendulkar. Again, there is this complex interaction of the preposition phrase with the nouns. The cameraman shot the man with the gun. That means, he shot, he took a picture of the man who had a gun. Man with the gun is a complete noun phrase. In this case, with the gun is attached to man. Okay. Or the cameraman actually fired a shot, fired a shot at the man with his own gun. In this case, the gun is with the cameraman. So, this is the first level of ambiguity or actually second level of ambiguity. First level of ambiguity was two meanings of shot. The second level of ambiguity is with the gun being attached to man or being attached to shoot. Okay. So, this gun was used as an instrument for shooting or it is a qualifier for man. The next level of ambiguity comes from the clause attachment here, when he was near Tendulkar. The ambiguity here is who is who was near Tendulkar, the cameraman or the man. Okay. So, there are these two possibilities cameraman or the man and depending on that, okay, depending on that there are more meanings of this sentence. Okay. So, this sentence really can uh, really can have a very large number of meanings depending on the combinations of multiple possibilities of attachment, multiple meanings of the word short and multiple attachments coming from the clause. Okay. So, let me just write down where this ambiguity comes from. Okay. This is an interesting point and it clarifies our notion of how ambiguity arises. So, the sentence is the cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was Tendulkar. So, ambiguity because of short two meanings okay, with the gun this is a preposition phrase two attachment points okay, two attachment points means short or man two meanings of short camera or gun. Okay. So, two meanings here, two attachment points. Another possibility is uh, the clause when he was near Tendulkar. Okay. So, this is a clause, when he was near Tendulkar is a clause. The question is his reference. Okay. What does he refer to? This he refers to the man or the cameraman. So, again two possibilities. Okay. So, two meanings of short, two attachment points for with the gun and two reference points for he, cameraman or man. Okay. So, when we multiply all these possibilities 2 into 2 into 2, we find that there are 8 different meanings of this sentence. Okay. So, this particular sentence the cameraman shot the man with the gun when he was Sendulkar has 8 meanings on the first level of analysis, but it is apparently true that this particular sentence which is a very complex sentence and it has many more meanings. Apparently, there are 14 meanings of this many of quite a few of them are actually nonsense, okay. but these 8 meanings that we discussed about they are extremely real, they are very much real and these meanings are all plausible and they are competing meanings. Now, these meanings become apparent, I definitely urge you to do this exercise. These meanings become apparent when you translate the sentence according to these meanings into your own mother tongue. Trans translate this for example, into Tamil or, or Hindi or Marathi. So, this will show you that there are different meanings of the 
uh, of the sentence. There are different meanings of the sentence. Okay. Now, uh, we have understood that ambiguity can come from the reference of a pronoun to a particular noun that there are different possibilities, two different meanings of the word lexical ambiguity and two different attachment points of a preposition phrase. I have given more examples. One example is from P. G. Woodhouse, Ring in Jeeves, a very famous novel. Here, this sentence is very instructive in terms of the ambiguity it produces when we analyze its phrases and clauses. Jill had rubbed ointment on Mike, the Irish terrier, taken a look at the goldfish belonging to the cook, which had caused anxiety in the kitchen by refusing its ant's eggs. Your exercise would be to find out what this which refers to and depending on that how the meaning changes. And the final sentence here is the a Times of India clip 26th February 2008, aid for kins of cops killed in terrorist attacks. So, here killed in terrorist attacks is a clause. Okay. The question is it uh, it uh, modifies what the cops or kins okay from that ambiguity arises so let me summarize the structural ambiguity point okay. let's first go back to the previous slide where we have seen the scope ambiguity namely the region of influence of adjectives and quantifiers preposition phrase attachment ambiguity where does the preposition phrase attach and then we proceeded to show that the combination of these ambiguities, okay, words, senses, different senses of the word, the preposition phrase attachment points and the clause attachment points, the interaction of all these different kinds of ambiguity can give rise to a very large number of meanings of a sentence. So, with this we finish lecture number 2, we will proceed to other kinds of other stages of natural language processing in the next lecture.